Welcome, everyone. Hallelujah. Welcome and Happy New Year to you. This is January the 7th, first Sunday of the new year. Amen. We are praising God and giving him glory for a brand new year. Hallelujah. Now, we're just doing part two of what we talked about last Sunday. Remember, last Sunday, we talked about it's time to cross over to the other side. So this Sunday, we just wanted to wrap that up and continue to talk about it's time to cross over to the other side. Let's take a listen. I will see you after the broadcast. Be Hallelujah. Right. You got to be able to see past what you see. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. You see them coming into the house of God. You see them working in ministry. You see them walking upright. You see them doing the things that are pleasing to God. You see them operating in the things that you sown into them with when they were little babies. Hallelujah. You see now that once they are grown, they're going to begin. Those, those seeds are going to begin to come alive in them once again in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. See what you can't see. And believe beyond what you've been able to believe. Hallelujah. Because it's happening. How many of y'all believe it's happening? Thank you, Lord. Woo, glory. Yes, Lord. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Praise God. Thank you, Lord God. Woo, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's praise God on our way to our seats. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. God is good. Amen. He is good and very good. Happy New Year. It's first Sunday of the new year. Amen. Hallelujah. Experiencing the goodness of God. Hallelujah. He is such a good father. And he's faithful. New mercies every morning. Hallelujah. That is the goodness of God. Amen. We are in a new year, new opportunities. Thank you, Lord God. New beginnings, praise God. Hallelujah. Where there are opportunities for new beginnings. Now, whether or not we, we, we start the new beginnings, that's going to be left up to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, last week, we started off talking. Oh, I got. I, let me just say this. Thank you for being our healer. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for being our healer. Thank you for making us whole. Hallelujah. Because listen, when you think about it, what can you do ill? What, what can we do on our beds of affliction? Hallelujah. That's why we, we praise God for making us strong. Amen. For giving us what we need, for doing for us what it is that he knows that we need so that we can run on as we said when we were growing up to see what the end's going to be amen praise god praise god hallelujah so we want to pick up where we left off last week amen praise god we talked about crossing over to the other side amen one of the things that i did mention last week is that i personally feel that it's good to reflect back over the year that we're coming out of. Amen. I feel that it's good for us to do that, that we reflect back, that we take a look. And then I begin to just do a little research. And, you know, and I was reading and I read where in the Jewish culture, one of the things that some of them do is when they're entering a new year, they do do that. They reflect back, but this is what they reflect back on. They reflect back on what they've learned. Then they unlearn. Then they learn again. Well, what do you mean they unlearn? Well, they unlearn things that weren't productive, unfruitful, things that didn't get them anywhere. Amen. They unlearned those things because they knew I can't take things that are unproductive into something new. That's just like we talked about sewing old cloth onto new garments, amen? 
but they know that in order to be successful, if I've learned some things that are hindering me, I need to unlearn those things. Amen? If I've introduced habits into my life that are destructive, that are causing me to, to, to fail in certain areas, that are causing destruction in my personal life, in my family life, in my business, in my walk with Christ, then I have to unlearn those things. Amen? Our priorities have got to be, we say this all the time, but our priorities what? First, to seek first the kingdom and its right way of doing things, amen, and to please God. While I was reflecting over this, it was like, what is your priority, Pastor Regina? My first priority, I pray it stays this way, and I know it's yours too, is to fulfill the will and the call of God on my life, whatever it takes. I'm talking about whatever it takes. Remember last week I said, look, if you got to go over, if you got to go through, if you got to go around, whatever it takes. Failure is not an option. We have to stop giving up so easily. Yes. You, you can't just give up in the midst of what you believe in your heart that God told you to do. Amen? So whatever it takes, I've got to fulfill assignment. And whatever God has called me to do, I believe that with everything in me. Why do I believe that first and foremost? Because that was the attitude of our master. That was the attitude of the Savior. The attitude of the Savior was, I have come to do the will of the Father, whatever it takes. My life, our lives have got to align with his, amen? So when he tells us it's time to cross over, we got to be ready to cross over. Amen. We've got to be ready to shift. We've got to be ready to move. He might tell you, drive to Conway, drive to Maumelle, drive whatever, eat lunch in the break room, whatever it is, you hear him saying, understand there is a divine connection that's either going to change your life or change the life of somebody that he's assigned you to. Amen. Assignment is everything. Not fulfilling assignment not fulfilling what God has called, called you to, your purpose, yours, amen, should be a great concern for all of us. Amen? Now let's go, look back in Mark chapter 4. This is where we started out last week. We started out in Mark chapter 4 and verse 35. We're just going to do a little research, I mean, do a little review, and then we're going to go on into what he's given us for this week. Amen? Mark 4 and 35 says this, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. <laughs> Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was, in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious storm came up and the waves broke over the boat set so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushions. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care that we're about to drown? He got up. He rebuked the wind, said to the waves, Quiet, be still. The wind died down and there was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Verse 41 says, they were terrified and asked each other, who is this? I'd have been asking the same thing. Even the winds and waves obey him. Now remember, I said, whenever he says cross over, that's the time to move. Amen? Remember this. I said this last week. Jordan will not roll back until you approach it, until you move towards it. Amen. Until you put, until they put their feet in the Jordan, Jordan did not, wouldn't, was not going to roll back. You have got to move when it's time to move. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got to move when it's time to move. Remember last week I also said faith without works is dead. We prove our faith by our works. Remember, it is not faith until you use your faith. Praise God. Write the vision. 
walk the vision out. Amen. Understand God will provide. He does not hear me. God does not give vision without provision. Amen. He is going to provide blessings and provision. They may come from unexpected places, unexpected sources, places you didn't think. I didn't think they had that. It's not up. That's what's wrong. We think too much. We try to rationalize too much. We try to process too many things in the natural because we feel that's how God, there is a natural system that has nothing to do with the way the spirit of God moves. Amen. It has nothing to do with the supernatural move of God. So don't expect God to move like natural things do because he made those things and he moves totally different. Amen. So now here's where we started out. We started out by saying, remember, they left in the evening. It was late. It was later in the evening. And so the first thing he wanted us to take a look at, you've got to understand that it is never too late. Never too late. Hallelujah. And this is not just something that deals with age. Even though we, this is where we were last week talking about age, but whether it's age or not, whether you think, I'm just past my time. I just, I have waited entirely too long to do what it is I feel God told me to do. It's not too late. It is never too late. And listen, if you are getting older, God has promises to his people. I, I read this in Isaiah 46 and 4. Let me read this. It says, I will be your God throughout your lifetime until your hair is white with age. I made you and I will care for you. Hear that, somebody. Amen. Somebody where they told you, oh, just go on and sit down. We don't even hire anybody your age any longer. You know, you all have gotten your, where you're unuseful. Listen, there are times in Scripture where he told them, listen, you call the aged people. Those of you who are older, I need you to train up the ones who are younger. So don't ever think God is going to discount you because the world may. Amen. Because what God says goes. Hallelujah. He said, I made you. I will care for you, and I will carry you along and save you. That's the word of God. And remember what we read in Psalms 103 and 5? He satisfies your mouth with good things. What does that mean? At every stage of life that you are in, God will take care of us. He will satisfy us. He will revitalize you. He will give you got young folk now that need revitalizing. There's a lot of people that are just tired. They're just tired. I don't know if it's overworking. I really don't know what it is, but they're tired. Amen? Amen. So we have to take a good look at what's going on in our lives and then have this time, which is going to lead us to our next thing that we talked about, leaving the crowd, getting alone with God having a long time, quiet time with the Father so that you can hear, so that I can hear his voice. Amen. They left the crowd. They brought him. They left, got into the boat. Hallelujah. Sometimes you have to know I have got to separate myself. I have to. The, what, what I'm doing right now, it's just not working. I've got to separate myself. I've got to come along aside to be with the Father so I can hear what the Spirit has to say to me. Remember, the Holy Spirit is sent to lead and guide us into all truths. Amen? That's what the paracletos does. He comes along beside us and he talks to us. We will succeed if we listen. It's when you don't listen. Amen. Oh, I've been where I didn't listen. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. That, that old saying, once you learn better, you do, do better, you better. Amen. You learn better, do better. <laughs> Amen. I mean, that's all I can say. When you learn better, when you learn and come to the real, realization, you know what? Every time I don't consult God. Every time I move out on my own, every time I do something that I think is right because, well, you know, it's just, everything is just lining up the way I feel. It, everything is I, I, I. But I didn't consult the Father. I didn't get the direction that I needed. 
He's God. Knows everything about inside, out, down, sitting, up, rising. He is God. Amen? So he knows us. It is imperative that we find quiet time. Ooh, I just can't sit still that long, Pastor Regina. I just can't. Oh, hey, trust me, I understand. You, you hyperactive folks, I know. We're the same. But let me tell you, the Holy Spirit can change you. Yes, he can. When you need to get somewhere and sit down and you ask him to help you, he will ask. You walk, you pays until you get yourself in a, pl in a place where you can sit it down. Because you can. And you can hear and you can listen and you can pay attention because he wants to speak concerning you, concerning your family, concerning whatever it is that you're needing in your life. He wants to direct us. We have preached about our steps being ordered. Hallelujah. Then you got to know the direction you need to take. So it takes quiet time. Well, why do you have to be quiet? You have to train your spirit to hear. Amen. You have to train. Remember in 1 Kings 19, I wrote this down. 1 Kings 19 and verse 11. Listen to this. This is what he told Elijah. He said, go forth, stand up on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, breaking pieces of rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, a still, small voice. It was a still, small voice. And Elisha heard it. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He passed by, but he wasn't in that. Well, see, I know it's the Lord. He ain't in that. Everything is not the, the, the lightning and the thunder and the noise. Yes, sometimes I know that it is. But what I'm saying right now, he wants to train us, train our spirits to hear in the noise. You have to be able, get yourself in position that when confusion has broken out all around and things are going on all around, you can tap into this place because I get myself alone with God. I allow myself alone time so I can hear. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So I can tap in and I can hear that quiet voice will speak. Even through the noise, he will speak. So it's time that we hear what the Spirit has to say. Hallelujah. The third thing we looked at, they took him along just as he was. He was already in the boat. Remember, he had asked them to take him to the, out to the boat, and he was speaking to the people. And it, it was like, okay, you want to cross over? When you say cross over, it's time to cross over. I don't need to think of a whole lot of things that I have to do. I don't have to worry about what I'm going to eat, what we're going to wear. Let's go. Amen? And that's what they did. You have to know when to move. There are certain things that you can't worry yourself with when it's time to go. Amen? Because when it's time to go, there are things that God, remember I told you, there are things that he aligns on the path and he prepares for us. Amen. And while they were going, what happened? A furious storm came up. Amen. And the waves broke over the boat, so it was, ne it was nearly swamped. Understand this. When it's time to step out and obey God, you have to expect some opposition. You have to expect some pushback. Amen. You have to expect the enemy to rise up any time. You are about to do anything significant, significant for the kingdom of God. The enemy's attacks are certain. Yes. Amen. Remember, he's just as a roaring lion. But here is one thing that the Holy Spirit really began to speak to me about is that we are not mentally prepared. We don't have mental stamina. We don't have the mental capacity to handle things. Amen. Being mentally prepared for a spiritual attack is important. When you are familiar, remember I said he does not change his ways. He just changes in how he gets them done. Amen. 
So when you familiarize yourself with the de devil's schemes, it won't catch you off guard. Amen. You will learn how to resist when it's time to resist. Remember Ephesians 6 says, put on the what? Not the partial armor. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Stop fighting one another. Amen. We wrestle not. Somebody say wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of the world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Hallelujah. Not each other. If it's made out of flesh and blood, you are not my enemy. Oh, what? Y'all not my, we're not each other's enemy? No, we're not. We are brothers and sisterins together. That's a new word, sisterin. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> but we are not each other's enemy. Amen. Praise God. So we have to prepare ourselves. Prepare in prayer. Praise is a weapon. Not just in church, but in your house, in your car, whatever. Praise is a weapon. Prayer praise the word of God. Because remember I told you, you've got to have enough word and enough strength that when you step out, it can support what you're doing. Yeah. Amen? Because if you pull your gun, what I say you need to do? Shoot your shot. Okay? You don't go put, devil? Oh, you better shoot your shot, baby. Uh-huh. Yeah. Shoot your shot, honey. Yeah. And that is in the word of God. And let me say this too. If you are at a place in your life and you can't deal with the noise of people and what they say and things that go on around us, amen, you're in trouble. And I'm not trying to say people are always talking. About, sometimes people are not saying. Uh, the enemy will magnify things. Trust me. Holy Spirit had to teach me that. Now, you got people, they always going to talk. That's just the nature of people. But if you can't handle it, let me tell you, if I was someone that could not handle words, you would be up here preaching all out of your emotions, preaching all out of yourself. Well, if you don't like it, then, hey, what is that? <laughs> y'all find y'all another pastor. <laughs> no. And I'm not even saying, I've not heard anything around here where I even need to say that. But I'm just saying, if you don't, are not careful and learn some mental toughness, amen, and some strength within, you're going to be carried away with everything that you hear. Jesus had to, do, to deal with this. Because let me tell you, I just told you, people are going to be people. In Mark chapter 3, he goes into the synagogue and there was a man there with a shriveled up hand. Watch this. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath day. They're watching. You got to understand, there are going to be people who watch and wait for others to fail. I've never understood that. I'm not going to ever understand that because I figure we on the same team. Amen. I'm talking about especially in the church because that's where a lot of fallout can happen. But I figure we on the same team, so we need to learn how to play together. Amen. There's so much going on right now. I'm not going to call any names. I'm not going to, because it's just too much. Amen. It's just too much. You know, by the time I get new, sometimes it's probably be old, but they keep me up. Amen. It's like, you know what? This is just too much. Praise the Lord. But as I was watching this one story, let me, I read a comment from someone. This is what the comment said. The comment said, I've been waiting. They did. I've been waiting on this to happen. I knew they were going to fail. I said, you, that's what you do with your time? You set up and you wait? You don't know how to celebrate people? You don't know how to, 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 to even applaud when somebody... This is ridiculous. I've been waiting. I'm going to tell you something. You're looking for bad stuff to happen. You're looking for bad in somebody. You're going to find it. And it doesn't have to be true. Let me put that disclaimer out there. It does not have to be true for somebody to believe it. They've just been waiting. 
Because if you're waiting, soon as the news come, you're not going to verify it, validate it or nothing. I know it's true. Amen. I Welcome back. Welcome back. Praise the Lord. I pray you were blessed by the message. Let's cross over to the other side. Amen. And as always, I just want to encourage you. I want to encourage you that when you hear the voice of the Lord, when you hear God's command, move. Amen move. Don't stay where you are. Failure is not an option. It's time to cross over. And as you will just see, as you, well, you just heard in the message, crossing over and doing what God has commanded us to do, yes, we're going to be blessed by it. But there's always someone else that he has assigned us to. Amen. Someone for us to connect with. That happened with the man in Mark chapter 5. Jesus was determined I'm going over to the other side, even if I just have to go for the one. The storm is not going to stop me. Nothing is going to get in my way, amen, because I came to do the will of my Father. Once he did that, he released the evangelist that was down on the inside of this man, amen, and he himself went on to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Go tell somebody the good things that God has done for you, amen. Let that be your assignment to tell of the goodness that God has done in your life. I know he's done something for you because he has truly done something for me. I don't have time to name them all, amen, because they are many. Listen, thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking out your time to join us for this broadcast. We at Soul Gathering Ministries Community Church, we appreciate you. Continue to call us. There are those who've been asking about partnerships. Listen, all you have to do is give us a call at 501-773-1400. We'll give you all the information that you need. Also, there will be information that will come on right after the broadcast. We love you in the Lord. We will see you next week at the Master's Feet. Be blessed. Thank you for joining our program at the Master's Feet with Pastor Regina Moore. Soul Gathering Ministries is located at 7600 South University Avenue in Little Rock, Arkansas. For more information, call 501-773-1400 or go to soulgatheringministries.org. You may also email us at soulgatheringministries at yahoo.com. Join us next week for another inspiring word from Pastor Regina Moore.